for having me today. 4.8 million people in Australia have a disability. Of those 4.8 million people, 27% have employment. 27%. Hello, it's a pleasure to be here. I don't know how I'm meant to follow that introduction um, because I feel like I can just go home now. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure and honour to be here as the 2016 ACT Young Australian of the Year, but also, mm, oh, sorry, most importantly, uh, the co-founder of GG Flowers, Canberra's social enterprise florist that employs people with special needs. I have, I come from a family of girls. Um, there's four girls, well, five girls including our mum, six including the rabbit, so you can imagine the queue for the bathroom every day. Um, so of this family of, um, with three sisters and me. My sisters and I have a great life. Um, we come from a privileged background, we went to private schools, but most importantly, we've been independent. Uh, we go to school, we go to uni, we go out clubbing, we do everything that a young person should do. But Guyana, my sister, can't do that. Guyana is 17. She goes to college. If you ask her to clean a room, she'll say, not now, bossy boots. Um, and, it, you know, she believes that frozen yogurt should be a commodity of the world. But she's a little bit different. She has Down syndrome, an intellectual disability that sometimes, even though she's 17, will mean that she has the intellectual cap capacity of perhaps a seven-year-old. So when, when faced with the reality, the fact that my sisters and I would have a great career and we would work very hard for that, my family and I faced a gut-wrenching, heart-stopping anxiety over her future. I'm not sure how many people in this room today have a special someone in their family or have come across someone with special needs, um, but I want you to imagine that they're your sister, your brother, your daughter, your son, and you can share with me that anxiety that I feel every day. Well, that I felt every day when I woke up. Because I almost felt guilty. I get to have this awesome life, and Guyana perhaps doesn't. But it's okay. We solved that problem. We created Gigi's Flowers. As I said, Canberra's social enterprise florist that employs people with special needs. Yes, that one. <laughs> I saw everyone's eyes going up that way. We started in our bathroom, and I'm so proud to say we've moved all the way to the garden shed. So you can say we're really killing it. But you know, we have employed seven people with special needs. And to me, I often say, three years into the business, I wanted to employ an army of 100. But I think to myself, that is 7%, uh, seven people of that 27% that are in, in employment. And I'm really pr proud to be contributing to that. So my employees come from very, very different backgrounds. I have Guyana who delivers and um, we hope to one day bring her into the floristry industry. But at the moment, she's very happy delivering flowers with a cuddle. That's a thing. And we let her do that because that is something that makes her very happy. She's also gushing at me at the front here, so I can tell uh, she's feeling a bit shy. Um, now, uh, but my other employees, I have a young boy. He is studying statistics and maths at ANU. He's 21, but he can't, for the life of him, hold eye contact with you. He can't talk to you. And God forbid you're a girl, he would probably run away. His, his dad contacted me over the Australian of the Year Awards and said, you know, I know, I know you are really, really busy, but is there any chance you would give my son a go? And I actually have a list of 200 families from all around Australia that want to work for Gigi's Flower. And I don't think it's just because we're really attractive. It's really because there is a fundamental issue in Australia for meaningful employment for people with special needs. At Gigi's Flowers, we pay award wages. We don't pay supported wages. Because I truly believe that if I had my sister in a workplace and being paid for doing a job, I don't want her to be paid $4 an hour and then for her having to go to the grocery store and live off that $4 an hour. However, there's a two that has actually, and supported wages, they're called, where you can pay someone for their capability, has actually been abolished by Fair Work Australia over the last few months. Something that I, I don't know, I'm, I can't decide my position on, 
Because while I think that it's great for a person with special needs to have an opportunity, I do believe they should be paid. But I also sometimes there's just not enough opportunities and I've felt that. So anyway, back to my 200 families. There were 200 families waiting for employment. And I said to this dad, I said, do you know what? Let me train him up. I don't think I can offer him employment forever, but I think I can, I can help. So over the process of about two months, I worked with this employee. I took, out, I took him out on delivery. He can drive. So I took him out on deliveries. We followed the navigation and I taught him all the way from ringing the doorbell, knocking on the door and saying, hi, these are your flowers. And I taught him how to do that. And now, eight months in, he looks at everyone with eye contact. I'm pretty sure he has a girlfriend. And, <laughs> yes. and um, he's in meaningful employment, you know? And this boy is great. He's so talented, but he just needed someone to sit with him and show him how to have those interpersonal relationships. So I'm really proud that Gigi's Flowers could do that. But in addition to that employee, Guyana, I do employ people predominantly that have Down syndrome, because I just have a, favorite, a soft spot to them. When I first started the, the business, I said to my parents, we're only hiring people with Down syndrome. I soon realized that uh, we wouldn't get very much done because they all love chatting, just like me. <laughs> so I needed people to keep me in line. But you know, the, running a social enterprise business has been a big eye-opening thing for me. On one end, I want to create employment opportunities. On the other end, I want to make money. But I can't do both. It's been three years and I have never been paid. Because I believe that this is my philanthropic investment in the future of my sister. I believe that in 10 years time, well, I don't, I'm not predicting the death of my family, I promise. But I believe that when my parents do pass away, it will obviously become my sister's and my responsibility to look after Guyana. And I've come up with my own NDIS system because I want her to be in employment, to have her own business and to be running that like clockwork and for it to be there for her. I don't want her to be relying on welfare because I wouldn't want to be relying on welfare. And so the model of Gigi's Flowers works, but it doesn't, it doesn't make a lot of money. But I'm okay with that. Because what I'm doing is I am filling a void in the world that there is. And I hope that one day I can show people how social enterprises are exactly the same as any other florist. I often say the product you get from Gigi's, the only difference, it's the same cost, it's the same products, it's the same flowers. The only difference is that it changed a life in the process. So at Gigi's Flowers, we employ, our employ we employ our employees and they come, they deliver, they make flowers, still in my garden shed. We hope to one day move on from the garden shed into a shop front. But we have bigger dreams. That dream is to go national. One day I hope to have us in every capital city in Australia and I hope to be the interflora of Australia. Because I believe that our product is awesome. I believe what we're doing is awesome. And I want to empower every Australian to choose a social enterprise. This is because a social enterprise model means it's doing something for good, something for purpose. And that purpose for me is obviously to create employment opportunities. So what I go around Australia talking about is how when you purchase a, social or when you purchase a product through a social enterprise, that money keeps giving. So you give your money to any other normal, any business, and often it stays there, or it goes to a Ferrari, or goes to something. Here, we don't get the Ferrari, we bypass the Ferrari, and we'll employ six people with special needs, with that one order. Because from taking the call, to ordering the flowers, to making the flowers, to wrapping it, and to delivering it, there are people with special needs that are impacted the whole way through. But it's not all rainbow ro we have rainbow roses. It's not all rainbow roses. It's really hard. And I'm going to be completely honest with you. I know that for me, if I didn't have a little girl, someone very, sorry, someone very special to me, I probably would have given up by now. 
But for me, it is, I'm going back to that gut-wrenching anxiety that sits in my stomach every day. If we don't make this work, Guyana and her friends are not going to have employment because the employment opportunities out there for people with special needs are very limited. Now I'm going to share with you a little story and I want to talk a, on a broad scale of inclusion because another part of Gigi's Flowers is the inclusive aspect that we promote. We promote inclusion because we get people with disabilities to knock on your door and quite often Guyana will insist on a hug and if you don't give her a hug, she won't leave until you give her that hug. <laughs> but that is a really sweet, I believe it's a very sweet model because it's teaching people to have a relationship with her and break down those boundaries. So now they see her at the shop, supermarket and they ask for photos. They don't fear her, they come and ask her. And I believe that that is a great fundamental step, specifically in Canberra, for bridging down those inclusive barriers that we often feel. I often take Guyana to the grocery store every Sunday night and I make her grocery shop. We can kind of, you know, we, our pace kind of is like going on a snail. So we're very slow, we pick up everything that's in the shop, but it's very important for her independence because remember, I'm all about independence. And um, one day we were, I make her do the self-serve checkout because I believe that that's a really great tool in empowering her to have skills that she probably wouldn't learn in everyday life. So we're scanning the goods, she's scanning them, often scanning them twice, etc., etc. You know, often Kit Kats, Smarties, they're all going in there. But anyway, we're scanning and this woman comes up to me and she says, can you be quick? No, please. And I turned around and I was like, oh, look, I'm really sorry. I'm just teaching my little sister how to scan these goods. She has Down syndrome, it's great for her. I was really happy about it. And she replied and she said, can you bring her at another time then? Sorry, what time should I bring her? You know, and I wanted to run her over with a trolley, but apparently, apparently that's legal. Illegal, sorry. Um, and I just, you know, and I just, for me, that what I thought as a nation and as a city, we were really moving forward with um, inclusion. Because the amount of people that come and talk to Guyana every day has really increased. I remember when I was younger, people used to snigger and laugh at us because she would be dressed head to toe in pink but of course we could never do anything about that so we just let that happen but I well, I have done a lot of work with her and I see those those sniggers and I see those stares and for me it's great that she can't understand but I, I feel that and it's okay because I can deal with it but I often think it shouldn't be like that so for me if I could go back to that lady I would actually invite her into Gigi's and I would say, come on, on a, come on an, on a delivery and I'll show you how awesome life can be with a person with special needs. Especially with Guyana. She opens my eyes, but also she opens my heart. Everything has to be done with a cuddle and a kiss. Everything. It's great. But I suppose my message to you, there's two. Number one, be more inclusive. If you see someone with a special need in your community, People like me are relying on people like you to accept them. And it's not about tolerance, it's about acceptance. And I feel weird talking about acceptance because I just think it should be natural, especially with a person with special needs. But my number two thing is social enterprises. They are honestly securing the futures of so many marginalised and disadvantaged people. We rely also on you for your customer, uh, your your business rather, your business. We really, really rely on you to buy your products through us so that we can continue to change lives. I just wanted to show you a video um, just to finish off um, so you can meet my family and my social enterprise. I think every business in Australia has an opportunity to employ one person with special needs. And it's just gonna take a little bit of love, a little bit of patience and a bit of compassion. And I think they're all characteristics that we as Australians have. We don't really measure our success on profit. We, we measure it on happiness. And, and by that we're making millions of dollars.